Welcome to lecture 12. In this lecture we'll add an imaginary growing lamp to our scene. We'll use some specifications for our lamp that are typical for professional growing lamps. Also we want to be able to adjust the power and so the amount of light that the lamp emits with a slider. The implementation of the growing lamp will affect the script in different places. We'll add a variable to our variable list and introduce a boolean for the switch of our lamp. Next we will define our growing lamp inside the init function. In the key input handler we enable the L key to switch on and off our lamp. Here we also add some functionality that automatically turns on and off the lamp at a certain level of the light intensity. Finally we'll add the light switch function that puts on and off our lamp. At the top of our script we'll add the variable grow lamp and the boolean grow switch, which is set to false. So in the begin phase, where we have set the light intensity to 100 in our init function, the light will be switched off. In our renderer we set the property physically correct light to true. However, in this project we cannot benefit from this property, because we use normal textures and not high dynamic ranged textures. HDR textures are textures that show different things at a different exposure level to light. Although we did not include this in our course, you can create HDR textures in Photoshop by playing with the exposure settings. You can do so if you like and create a more realistic texture behavior on light, but we want to show you the relationship between power and lumens when we create our growing lamp. Working with HDR textures also involves color tone mapping. This is the algorithm that handles the exposure. In the documentation of FreeJS you find different algorithms that sort different results for light exposure on the texture. The Reinhardt tone mapping might be one of the most popular algorithms to use. In the init function we define our growing lamp as an instance of the spotlight. Then we want to specify the lamp's color, its angle, the power and the penumbra. According to this publication, the growing of plants is influenced by the light colors between 400 and 500 nanometer and 600 to 700 nanometer. This means that in LED growing lamps, blue and red colored LEDs are combined. For our growing lamp, we choose a specification of 420 nanometer. And with this website, we can convert the nanometers into a value in RGB which we are going to use for our lamp. We set our lamp to a 15 degree angle, which is math pi divided by 12. We know that a 1 watt LED lamp emits 100 lumen. And when our property physically correct lights is set to true, the power property is equal to the amount of lumen that the lamp will emit. Initially we set the power to 25, which is equal to 25 lumen, but with the slider we can change this value and adjust it to the specifications of our imaginary growing lamp. The penumbra defines the sharpness of the edges of the light. We set it to 0.5. And then we have completed all specifications or all properties of our growing lamp. The only thing that we didn't do yet is add the lamp to the scene because this is handled by the light switch function. Inside the key input handler we add an if statement that checks if the key L is pressed. When it is it calls the light switch function and the function will set the lamp on or off depending on the boolean. Then it's time to take a look at the light switch function. In the first line the grow switch boolean is evaluated and checked if it's true with the question mark operator. When it is true, the growing lamp will be removed from the scene, which is equal to switching off the lamp. When it's false, the growing lamp is added to the scene, which is equal to switching on the lamp. And in the last line, we flip the value of the boolean, so the next time the function is called, it will result in the opposite behavior. As a demonstration, we also added an automatic switch. The automatic switch is created inside the key input handler, using two if statements. The first statement checks if the light intensity value is below 35 and the light switch boolean is false. 
In that case the light switch function is called switching on the lamp. The second statement checks if the light intensity value is above 35 and the light switch boolean is true. In that case the light switch function is called switching off the lamp. Now the choice of a light intensity value of 35 is arbitrary, so you can also use another value. Then in our index file or document we want to add the slider. When creating the index file we have prepared an element of class card which will hold our slider. Inside the card we use the input tag. The type attribute is set to range with a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 100. The current value is 25 and you see we use the same value as the power property of our growing lamp. The class attribute is set to slider and the ID is power range. We need this ID to grab the element in our JavaScript. To make the slider operational we finally need to add something to the init function. First we store the power range element into the power slider variable. Next we assign the unmouse up property of our power slider to a function. The function uses the value of the slider to update the power property of our growing lamp. Then I multiply this value by 4 because my imaginary growing lamp has 4 LEDs. And then it's time to take a look at the results. We open the application with the live server. When diminishing the light intensity with the minus key at a certain moment our growing lamp will be switched on. We know this is at a light intensity of 35. Then we can use the slider to vary the intensity of the growing lamp. And when we use the plus key at a certain moment the light will be switched off again. You will notice that the automatic switch we have created blocks the key input with the key L. So if you want to use the manual light switch you have to comment out the automatic switch we have created in the key input handler. As the growing lamp is not really part of our digital twin and does not really exist in the real world, it only serves a demonstration purpose. But it might inspire you to extend on the system and on the strawberry fields project. So see you in the next lecture where we will integrate what we have built so far into our dashboard.